it's a bit cold this weekend and we are here in late November and one topic that is popular for this time of year is overwintering peppers and eggplants. I am by no means an expert in this area and in fact I've been looking at other people's content, YouTube videos of course, uh, to get ideas and best practices on this. That being said, I overwinter eggplants and peppers last year. Uh, and th that endeavor was totally successful, although it's not clear to me that the overwintered peppers produced a whole lot earlier than the started ones uh, that were started fresh that season. Uh, some of the chili peppers produced uh, earlier than the freshly started ones, and I also did have some peppers, some chili peppers in particular, that fruited over the winter during 2020. Uh, the peppers were overwintered in my basement nursery, and there was plenty of heat down there, but not a lot of light. The lighting that I was using was just some fluorescent lights that were a good four to five feet away from the plants, and that seemed to work good enough. So this year, I'm doing it again. Uh, besides uh, harvesting all the peppers that were left, I'm trimming all the leaves and the branches, um, but what I'm doing is I'll be washing off the pots here, and then I'm spraying it with uh, some insecticidal soap uh, just in case there's some leaves uh, that, in case there's some bugs that I don't see, I'm kind of looking for bugs and things like that to, to make sure that I'm not bringing bugs into the greenhouse. I am not taking them out of their pots and repotting with fresh potting soil. Um, I think that might be worthwhile because in some cases, because you would be surprised even sitting here on these racks in the greenhouse, you'd be surprised how all kinds of bugs seem to get in here, even sometimes slugs, you know, they must, they make the great crawl up the, into the greenhouse and up the fighters, or they were somehow in the <laughs> potting mix that I used to begin with. But in any case, um, I didn't, I didn't replenish the soil last year. I just added a little bit of fertilizer and I'm gonna do the same this year. It's a little bit risky because there's probably all kinds of stuff like fungus gnats and stuff like that that are in here. And maybe that could corrupt the basement nursery if, if I'm not careful, but I'm, I, I think if I kind of spray the insecticidal, insecticidal soap, wash the outsides of the pot or whatever, I'll probably be okay. I'm not getting overly uh, particular about it. Typically, if you use outdoor soil in your indoor uh, nursery operation, you're asking for trouble. I am uh, concerned about that possibility of things like fungus, gnats, and molds, uh, but it wasn't really a problem last year and I did something similar. So I'm gonna take some risk here, kind of do what I'm doing to clean these up a bit, and then, um, but I'm not gonna redo the soil in these pots. These pots have not been hanging around outside, they've only been in the greenhouse. I'm gonna put this one in the questionable pile. It's kind of small and, I mean, after I've cut them down, they're all small, but it's particularly small. Its leaves were a little bit kind of curled up, not looking as great. So I'm gonna put a bunch in a questionable pile because I've got so many in here. I'll save this till the end and depending on how much room I have in the basement nursery and if not enough room, it doesn't make the ark. It just uh, goes out into the compost heap. Well, you can find plenty of other authors and YouTubers who will tell you all about how to best cut back the branches and the leaves and that kind of thing. And I've done my fair share of cutting things back here. I wouldn't say that I've necessarily uh, mastered that art, um, but I'm actually trying to do it somewhat artistic and have fun with it, maybe make it more like a, a pepper uh, eggplant version of doing some bonsai. So you might ask, why is this an activity for November? Well, I didn't need to do it earlier because the temperatures outside here at PDX Garden Home were not freezing uh, yet. And now this weekend, the temperatures are down to about 34 degrees at night. Now that's still not freezing, of course, but my understanding is that the temperature at ground level uh, which would include the shelving here in the um, in the greenhouse. Ground level is actually quite high um, for this purpose, that the temperature at ground level can actually be several degrees or significantly different than the air temperature that is uh, used to estimate the temperature like when you're looking on a phone app for uh, projected temperatures. So with that in mind, if it's 34 degrees, uh, according to my phone app, or it's gonna be 34 degrees, I'm, I'm expecting that at night, it's it's actually a lot less uh, than that. So it actually could be frosty to the plants that are sitting here in the greenhouse. And and the nice thing about the greenhouse, you know, the thing is that 
the frosty temps outside are not necessarily kept from being in the greenhouse. The greenhouse is not really warmer than uh, the outside. But the nice thing about the greenhouse is that it helps keep the wind chill off. It helps keep the rain off. Uh, so things aren't getting cold and wet at the same time and having wind blowing on them. And so I think that helps uh, when things might otherwise get frost on them outside. It helps prevent some frost in here. But in, at the, in the final analysis, the temperatures in here are usually only about a half a degree different than they would be outside, if any difference at all. Well, as you'll see in here, I've got the racks set up in the basement nursery, but I don't have all the lighting set up. But I've got to get the peppers from outside back down into here because uh, we are expecting 34 degree nights. And while that's not quite freezing, it's close enough that, you know, it could it could be kind of really causing problems for these peppers. So I think it's getting to be the colder nights right now. Um, and uh, yeah, I just wanna go ahead and get these peppers down here where it's warm and then I can work on the lighting uh, a little bit later. Well, I'm potting up a pineapple plant here. I inherited a neighbor had left, left it when they were moving. They had just planted a pineapple top as an experiment, and then uh, they didn't. They weren't able to finish the experiment, so they gave it to me. This was really a couple of years ago. I think I've been growing this for a couple of years now. Um, hasn't done anything, probably because I've had it in too small of a <laughs> too small of a pot all this time. So yeah, I'm potting it up here, and hopefully we'll get uh, we'll get it to do something. Um, I mean, it's grown foliage. It just hasn't grown any kind of pineapple or a flower or anything like that. Heck, I don't know if it's supposed to. I haven't really looked up how this is supposed to work. Okay, gave it a little potting soil. And uh, now it's ready to, it's in a bigger pot, a little potting soil. Ready to go into the basement nursery. Well, I'll have to put a little bit of water in there too, but that'll be fine. This week's harvest from the greenhouse, we got peppers and cucumbers. And from outdoor, we were harvesting broccoli, bok choy, 